Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Status, where medicine makes perfect sense, and today we have a mnemonic about Sjogren's Syndrome. We have talked about Sjogren's Syndrome in the previous two videos in my rheumatology playlist. Today it's a beautiful mnemonic, not just one, but many. But first, let me help you answer the questions of the previous video. Number one, is it possible to diagnose Sjogren's Syndrome in a patient who is not complaining of dry eyes or dry mouth? And the answer here is yes. Let me ask another question. Is it possible to diagnose myocardial infarction in a patient who is not complaining of chest pain? Yes. If you have your objective proof, such as high cardiac biomarkers in the serum, if you see the clogged coronary on catheter, and if you do a biopsy of the heart and you see the freaking dead cells, of course there was myocardial infarction. What other evidence do you still need, Jeffrey Pence 27? Is this a majority of cases? No, it's not a majority of cases, but these patients do exist. Question nine. Number one, what's the most common cause of disease-related death in patients with Sjogren's syndrome? And the answer here is the B-cell lymphoma, the multoma, baby. The most common initial complaint in Sjogren's syndrome is Raynaud's phenomenon. It's patriotic, red, white, and blue. The most common site of multoma in Sjogren's syndrome is the freaking parotid gland. The most common disease associated with secondary Sjogren are rheumatoid and lupus. Now to the mnemonic. Sjogren syndrome has the J. Please add a D. So you have DJ. DJ. Imagine a patient with Sjogren syndrome, see the dry eyes and dry mouth, and standing in front of a DJ. D and J. D. Destruction because it's autoimmune. Dry eye, dry mouth, dry skin, dry vagina, dry cough, depression, dysphagia, candida, sialisinitis, dental caries, periodontal disease. D is the fourth letter. So, Sjogren could be considered as a type 4 hypersensitivity. It happens in patients who are 40 to 60 years old, mostly females. J, Jacquard's deformity. We have talked about it before and the difference between Jacquard's deformity and rheumatoid deformity. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, the maltoma. Most common organ, the parotid glands. There is another mnemonic for Sjogren's syndrome. You just write A, B, C, D. A, anti-SSA or anti-Rho. B, anti-SSB or La. A, Rho. B, La. C, C, J. C, J. Why do I see J? Because the Jacquard's deformity and the non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is a B-cell lymphoma, marginal cell lymphoma, multoma. D, destruction, dry eyes, dry mouth, dry skin, dry vagina, dry cough, depression. You know the rest of the story, right? Let me contrast between rheumatoid arthritis and Sjogren's syndrome. Please go back to my previous videos on rheumatoid. One of the differences between rheumatoid arthritis and Sjogren's syndrome is that Mr. Rheumatoid is an erosive arthritis, but Sjogren is kind of naive. It's non-erosive. It's like less ugly than rheumatoid. It's non-erosive arthritis. How do you know if it's erosive or non-erosive? Do a flipping x-ray of the joint. There is another difference between rheumatoid and Sjogren. Rheumatoid affects major salivary glands, but Sjogren affects minor salivary glands. That's why my mnemonic is Sjogren should go to jail. Sjogren should go to jail. Why should Sjogren go to jail? Because it affects minors. Such an evil piece of melanin. A third difference between rheumatoid and Sjogren, when rheumatoid affects the salivary glands, I mean the major, it's usually asymptomatic. But when Sjogren affects the salivary glands, I mean the minor, it's usually symptomatic. Sjogren syndrome, minor salivary gland. Does that mean that it's impossible for Sjogren to affect major? It can of course affect major. Uh, yeah, that's true, but mostly the minor. And by the way, here I'm not talking about the lymphoma. The lymphoma affects the parotid, which is a major. Here I'm talking about the dry mouth, the chronic lymphocytic sial adenitis. This is minor salivary glands. Most of the time, not all the time. Rheumatoid is usually major. IgG4 related disease, major salivary glands. Sjogren's syndrome is the famous clinical triad and another eight systems. These are the eight systems. Please don't forget the depression, the RTA, the autoimmune thyroiditis, the lymphoma, and fibromyalgia. Nomenclature. What's the difference between Sjogren's syndrome and keratic conjunctivitis sicca? Keratic conjunctivitis sicca is just a fancy word for dry eyes, but it does not include dry mouth and arthritis and dyspareunia and other stuff. It's just the freaking eye. Dry eye syndrome is a fancy name of just dry eyes. 
Mikulic syndrome, enlarged parotid and lacrimal glands, could be caused by bazillion things, including Sjogren and IgG4 related disease. What's IgG4 related disease? When should I diagnose this? When the patient has enlarged, major, not minor, major salivary glands without the presence of any autoantibodies in the blood, such as SSA and SSB. What is Sika syndrome? Different sources have different answers. Some consider Sika syndrome as equivalent of Sjogren's syndrome. Some consider Sika syndrome involving only dry eyes and dry mouth, but not the inflammatory arthritis. Let's look at this Pickmonic Sjogren's syndrome, dry eyes, dry mouth, arthritis, which is King Arthur, anti-SSA, anti-SSB, Schirmer's test, there is increased risk of lymphoma in your parotid gland. So if you have a patient with Sjogren, she's your patient for like 10 years. And suddenly, today, she's presenting with an enlarged left parotid gland. What's the next step? Biopsy the parotid, there is an increased risk of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Try to practice recall of the items in the previous picture. This is Picmonic, one of my favorite tools to memorize medicine. It's visual, it's awesome. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to picmonic.com slash VIP hookup slash medicosis, and they will hook you up. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.